world of 1916 was complex. Well, the world of 1945 was complex. The world of 2016 is intensely complex. You'll be dealing with terrorists. You'll be dealing with hybrid armies. You'll be dealing with little green men. You're going to be dealing with tribes. You'll be dealing with national leaders and local leaders. You'll be dealing with politics and economics. And you'll be dealing with direct fire and indirect fire. And you're going to be dealing with it all. And it's all going to be dealt with simultaneously. years is flying right past. Well, uh, last night, you know, I, I was mentioning prior that uh, the show with John B. Wells, uh, it did air last night, and so if you get a chance to go to uh, Caravan to Midnight website, you can hear that interview, and it went very well. I was very pleased with it, and apparently they were too, and there's been a lot of good feedback, and I certainly got a lot of emails already and phone calls, and uh, the increase on the website is, has been uh, exponential, so this is a good thing. Of course, it means more work, but it is showing that people are listening. These things are happening to people all over the place. They're just uh, they're segregated. Some some are fearful to even say anything. You know, they, you try and talk to your parents, or you try and talk to a friend, and they just basically think you're crazy. So. Um, this is this is a wake up call for for many, and it's one of the reasons I want to talk about ecclesiastics uh, here with the show tonight, <clears throat> and and a conversation today had sparked that, so I'm going to go over that a little bit. But again, um, I want to thank everyone who's been supporting this ministry. We made it through a little tough time here, and I thank you very much for that. So we can continue on, and again. This is an opportunity to bring those out of the muck and the mire to, to get them right. Now, as I was mentioning uh, with the show last night, that um, this uh, this psychotronics is a, is a whole other category, a whole other um, issue that needs to be addressed by everyone, by everyone. Now, the demonic realm should be addressed by everyone as well, but... Uh, because of what the mainstream churches have done. And, and by the way, I, I w have been teaching. I want you to listen to me. I did a whole show on psychotronics in churches that with the the, the uh, tuning, the resonance of finding that ELF frequency, the, the, Sh the Schumann uh, resonance, that they can literally give you a euphoric feeling. So and it's very directional too. So it can be it can be like the one church down the road here has these crystals on on the pulpit. Well, what are crystals doing in the pulpit? And what I'm seeing is that they're actually transducers or types of antennas, because each one of them is rotated just a little bit. So when you add all of them up, they cover 180 degrees. So that would be literally what the pastor in the front sees in the congregation, where he's behind it, and probably a fairly weak signal being transmitted. So the closer you are to him, the more euphoric you feel, the more then you're convinced that the, his presence is the presence of God. Do you understand that? Now, I've talked to other people, other people who have done a lot more research, or I should say are ahead of me, that have been telling me that same thing. And I, I, I uh, before understanding everything, this was what I believed was happening. So it looks like this is uh, uh, the fact. Now, as we go on tonight about, you know, uh, everything nothing or nothing new under the sun, you know, Ecclesiastes 1.9 uh, things that have been, it is that which are shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there's nothing new under the sun. 
So when when we look at the Mandela effect, when we look at those things of CERN, those things of astral projection, those things of time travel, wormholes, uh, altering things in reality that we know them, here's what I want to say about that. Now, in, in any single event that they may be changing, whether it's you know through CERN or whatever means to alter something, and 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 so what we're talking about, uh, let, let me give an example of the Mandela effect again. Would be um, that you knew that there was something in Scripture that said a specific phrase, a specific word uh, for a specific meaning, and you've always held that in your spirit, you've held that in your heart. And now you go back to the Bible that you've had for 20 years and you go to that place and now it says something completely different. Something has been altered. We look at the Kennedy assassination and so the museum that is dedicated to this event, we know that through the, 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 uh, the, the video that there were four passengers and two secret servants. There were six people in that car. But now you have a car that's only capable of holding four people. Now, I mentioned to Julie a while back that I saw a photograph, and I'm going to have to go back and try and find that, that when you remember that Jacqueline, that, you know, when, when, when uh, President Kennedy took that one last fatal uh, shot to the head, and that fragments went everywhere. She jumped out, and then some are saying what she did is she actually went back and grabbed a fragment of his head. Now, if you break an arm and you're in that trauma, it's not uncommon for you to hold your arm back in, thinking it'll go back into place. And people who have even been dismembered through, you know, explosions have literally put their limb back on uh, because they're in shock. I mean, what else do you do, right? And and so in in that particular photograph that I saw, the Secret Service agent that was running to the back of the car to to push her back in and then and then uh, uh, cover them, you know, throw, putting his life at risk. Well, in this photograph, there's another person in in this photograph. Now, when we watch the video, there's only one agent that's doing this. But this photograph was taken by somebody standing along the road as a steel frame. There's a second person in that photograph. And I've got to find it. I, got, I don't remember where I saw it. I, you know, and, and by the way, someone did do a YouTube video on it saying, well, where is this person? How, how is this person in this fo- photograph? But yet when, when you, know, you look at the, the video of the assassination, there's only one agent. So that's a, that's an example of of the Mandela effect. Those things that that you know give the appearance are not, and what you thought was truth is now something different. Very bizarre. So this is why I chose the subject tonight. Now let's say a, a single event, a change, a temporal paradox. Okay, the paradox that there's a loop, sometimes referred to as a grandfather or consistency. So. So the question is, if you change something, and in, in history, the down, the down the road from that, then, then is everything going to be different? Or isn't that change because, his, or because time is a loop that what you change now actually changed the history that you had? Now, what I, what I want to bring up is that God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. The book of Revelation is quite clear to events that will take place. So in my personal view, regardless of what these reptilians, fallen angels, SOBs are trying to do, God's already aware of it. He's already in control, and he's already made the necessary adjustments for these people. Because those who try to destroy this world, God will destroy and that God judges all. He judges all. Now, those who are in Christ Jesus, then the Bema seat before Christ is where we appear. Um, But being, you know, the the Trinity or the, the, you know, uh, God and Holy Spirit and Jesus, that, that takes place as well as being one. 
So, so what we're seeing then is a interdimensional change. Okay, so there's no distance in the spirit realm. Once you enter in these dimensions, you know, same thing as Julie was talking about astral travel, astral projection, those things. Um, it isn't like you have to travel some great distance. Now, uh, here's 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 another thing. Uh, as I mentioned uh, on on the caravan to to midnight show about the event that took place with me in '93 where the spirit realm opened up, and I literally felt like I was thrown into outer darkness. The love of God was, was vacant. That to me, it was 5, 10, 11, you know, it wasn't very long. But when I came back into, the rea- into physical and looked at the clock, several hours had gone by. Now, if you take two atomic clocks and sync them together... Now, if, if you're not familiar with atomic clocks, the WWV, uh, it, there's actually two of them. There, there's one in Boulder, Colorado, that is transmitted over shortwave. And if you buy these atomic clocks uh, you know, that you can have for your kitchen and stuff and even wristwatches now, they have a radio receiver in it that receives that transmission. And so periodically, all the clocks through a signal is synced together. So when I'm on the shortwave, when I'm on ham radio, um, I can tune my radio, verify my frequency by going to uh, like 7.5, 10 megahertz, 15 megahertz exactly, and get the time. And you'll hear the the bing, bing, boop, you know, and and it's a data burst that tells me, boom, at that time. You know, like you've seen guys that were in the military, the alpha teams, and they all synchronize their watch. Well, that's what's taking place, right? We're synchronizing to one particular uh, standard. Uh, there's also one in Hawaii. There's two different frequencies. But the point of it is, is, is that when you alter time, whenever you do something uh, and get away from the original source. So with these two atomic clocks, what they did is they kept one on Earth, at a certain point, I don't remember the whole story, it's been too long, and then they took another one into um, one of the high surveillance craft, okay, as high as they could get, uh, that would be, you know, basically into going into space, into, into that atmosphere, or leaving the atmosphere, and, and I don't remember how long it was up there, then they brought it back down again. Well, sure enough, uh, the, the cha- there was a change between the two clocks. Now, these were atomic clocks that cannot change. Uh, the electron source that releases the electrons in the, in the matter at which their, uh, their properties is unfixable, unchangeable, unaltering. So something happened because of the distance between the two uh, which Julie, you know, I think gives lividity to the fact of going into the heavens, getting a distance away from the from the surface. So I think that as it goes into the firmament and getting closer to the throne of God, that something changes. So I'm just trying to tell you that I believe that God is in control. Do not panic over what they're trying to do, because I believe that God has made the adjustments because those things that they're trying to change have already been, and that is what I mean about Ecclesiastes, is that there is nothing new under the sun. So what has been, what was, has been. So no matter what they do, it's going to be. Do you understand? Period. And I want to go over some of the things that take place on that. Now, vexation of spirit... um, when when we talk about that, we're talking about stress. We're talking about a opposition in your soul, and that your spirit is restless or or concerned about a particular event or situation. So to me, that's what they're trying to do, trying to tax a your your very spirit for you to be you know in a in a never ending uh, impending doom. Okay, and and Julie and I have been talking about this. Please do not go there. Be still and know he is God, okay? So, again, everything, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, 
okay? And and by the way, when do you remember the Mamas and Papas? They did this song, you know, two every, you know, season. Here, here, this actually comes out of verse three, okay? And you know, there's a time to 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 be born and a time to die. There's a time to break down things and a time to build up. Uh, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. And we also see that joy comes in the morning. Okay, so always, uh, you know, keep the countenance up. Okay, when, you know, there's a time to cast stones and a time to gather them. Uh, there's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. Okay, so don't buy into everything that is, comes your way, is what I see in this. A time for loss and a time to keep and a time to even take that and cast it away. A time to rend, to render out or to sow. A, t- a time to silence and a time to speak. Now, again, this is something when when I'm involved in something, I choose my battles. I make sure that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and guiding me before engaging in something that I wish that I had not. A time to love and a time to hate. And, and, and so I, I want to speak about that, about making sure that you're not hard on yourself when someone offends you. And, and by the way, that was one of the main subjects uh, on the show last night was that uh, to, to guard your heart, do not let a root of bitterness come in. When someone offends you, do not take offense. Also come to the understanding of what they may be going through, and don't take it personally, okay? And, of course, the time for a war and a time for peace. Now, what we're coming into is, is none of us are seeking war, the war has come to us. So that means we are not in peace. And so since there is a time for war, then we engage in it. And then when these things come to pass, then we come into peace. So please do not stand down. Those who are coming are coming to take away what we know, who we love, what we've become as ourselves. They want to destroy us. Okay, the evil ones go around like a roaring lion, seeing who they may devour. Come to that understanding that no matter what you do, it's still coming to you. Uh, That's one of the brainwashings in liberals. That's why they're demon-possessed, because they can't comprehend that there's a time for war and a time for peace. There's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time to, to, to speak and a time to be silent. And, and they're just out of their gourd. They're out of their mind. They've got mind control, witchcraft spirits that, have, that, that also are high-fiving antichrist spirits because these individuals with the new age and, and the witchcraft will embrace the evil one and reject Jesus. And those who reject Jesus are cursed, all right? A time to drink and a, t- and a time to enjoy your labors, Okay. Now, remember that God will judge the righteous and the wicked, okay? Every purpose and every work that you have done. Now, when you remember that, remember that the angels go about taking note that when the books are opened, that these things will be revealed, all right? Now, excuse me. When when we look at a spirit of a man go upward, and Julie, you might want to take note to this, the spirit of a man goes upward, and the spirit of a beast goes downward. Now, Julie, as you're listening, you re, you brought up the very fact that these reptilians see us as beasts. And as I was going through this, I couldn't help feel that there was some connection here. And so I want to look into that more. I didn't have time. It was a very busy day today, and and so forth, but uh, but son, the son of man uh, in three eighteen is referred to as beast, and in that that as we perish and die, that we return back to dust, and you've heard that phrase dust to dust. Okay, so again, I, I can keep going, but I just want to address the fact that the the Mandela effect, that in my opinion, God has already made provisions for this. And so no matter what they try and do, 
what God has set forth, he will finish, period. So do not be grieved. Do not, do not be in despair. Do not fear, okay? All right? So those things that they change are not going to apply permanently with you and I. Okay, if you're in Christ, if you're doing his works, if you're his servant, his hand is upon you, and he will guide you to truth. All right? Keep that in your hearts, okay? So when we look at the prophecies, we, we look at those things that are of the future. And in that, that we take to the understanding that no matter what is done, it is not going to change. All right? So... And, and when we take into account time travel, when we take into account wormholes, when we take into account, again, those things that they have done for you know, supposedly the Mandela effect, um, God knows all things. And, again, his agenda, no matter what they've done, we also need to understand that, that this is what I believe, and I've talked about this before. Demons themselves in the spirit realm are bound to a law. They're bound to be within their domain. Now, we have seen, like in the book of Jude, that there are those who have left their domain. But what is what happens when they do that, then there's accountability by the Lord going before the courts of heaven to be judged. And he sends out his angels at sword's point to put these things back in their place. And I've given the... the uh, uh, example that if you have a box of puppies and you, you know, if it's closed up and you open the lid, uh, you just sit and wait and all those puppies will come out of that box sooner or later. And trying to put, you know, if you've got a large litter, trying to gather them and put them back in can be quite amusing. Well, this is what God's angels are doing. They're going about putting the puppies back in the box. Whenever an event takes place that makes no sense whatsoever, obviously has no edification for the Lord, which does happen, that then what we see is a miraculous intervention of God, and what we see is a miracle. We, we see people who are in horrible accidents. We see people who, who die for whatever reason, and they're brought back to life because these foul things have left their domain. They've gone too far. They stepped out of their bounds, and those things that God... Uh, had put in motion was has has been interfered with, and so again, what these angels do is they make right what they tried to make wrong. So you will see things that are going to be absolutely, incredibly supernatural events that only the Lord's hand obviously is involved. You'll see terrible things take place, and then something good will come out of it. So you, we, we see this in vehicle accidents, we see it in house fires, we see it in drownings, we see it in uh, airplane crashes, where all of a sudden there's just this incredible miracle. You know, one like for one uh, case, um, there was, and I don't remember how long ago it was, a plane had crashed into a residential neighborhood. And it was it was very bad. And there was one house where everybody, the, the house was leveled. And there were no survivors, at least they thought. And so as the workers went through in the body recovery, what they found was a newborn baby that was between two mattresses, maybe a little scuffed up, but survived. That is the intervention of the Lord to make sure that this child grows up to be the man or woman of God that God intended them to be. So this is what we see, and this is what takes place. So please, just be still and know that he is God. All right, Julie, I'm just going to bring you in, if I can get you unmuted here. Sometimes the Internet does not cooperate. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we, we didn't get a chance to talk too much about what you were going to be doing. I gave you an idea of what I was going to be talking about. In fact, the Mandela Effect was one of the main subjects for Watchman Radio last Saturday, and apparently that had good results. There's talk about uh, doing some more work on that. But uh, so, what do you got, and, and where do you want to go? Um, I don't. I did some research on the Mandela Effect, and I think I talked to you about that when I did it. Um, and I, I hadn't 
I had not brought myself to any conclusion one way or the other because I really think I'd have to do a whole lot more. And um, a lot of the stuff that people were saying had been changed um, was before my time. I don't, I don't, I don't really remember that. But there was one thing in particular that caught my attention, and it was the Berenstein, Berenstein Bears. And I know that that was S T E I N because I had purchased that entire set of books for my children when they were very, very small, and um, and I read them constantly to my kids. So I know for a fact if that is indeed changed to an A, it is wrong because, you know, that's just not what it was. And one of the things I also, when you were talking, um, the Holy Spirit showed me something. And as I was just sitting thinking about what you said, he kind of opened the, you know how he'll open the, 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 the curtain and go, look over here? Well, when you said there's nothing new under the sun, and I didn't have time to really go online and, and do what I was going to do in relation to this comment, kind of what I saw was um, Jesus used the word new very carefully, and he said all things have been made brand new, and he talked about the new earth and what have you. And then he said nothing is new under the sun. Well, what about above the sun, above the firmament, that everything there is new, but everything here under the sun is not new? If that's the case, there is nothing here that hasn't, that, that's new, everything's already been done, 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 done. In other words, what if we, in fact, do live in a time loop? What if we actually are in multiple realities at one time. Jesus said that we were already seated in heavenly places. Well, how is that possible? How, how is that possible? So I, uh, what you said made me just think about this new, the word new, and how we are a new creation in Christ. Maybe at the point in time where we become a new creation in Christ, that, of course, that was already foreseen. And then there's a lot of people, I, I actually had listened to a presentation today on Calvinism, which if you know me at all, you know that I absolutely abhor that doctrine because it is so wrong, because it's all predestined. But here's the thing, it's not predestination, because everything that ha- is going to be done has already been done. That I believe that is exactly what, that passage in the Bible is talking about is a time loop. I believe that we have, once we, and we belong to him, uh, after that, I believe that, that we have, um, we're not at the mercy of tides and winds, and, and, and he warns us about being, you know, the people who are um, uh, uh, thrown about like, you know, in the winds and the tides with doctrine, uh, doctrines of demons. They're just constantly going from one thing to another and never actually finding the truth. Uh, I, I kind of see when we come to Christ, if we truly do come to Christ and we are his, I, I'm almost thinking, thought that there might be something there that changes that nothing new under the sun, the control factor. Then, then you are a new creation. Well, he said there's nothing new under the sun, but yet you become a new creation. So I, I don't know. I just believe that once we, maybe, maybe this is how it is, once we become his, then we, we kind of step out of the time loop, and, and although we're physically in it, we kind of, you know, in, in the, the spiritual uh, way, we step out of it because we're not supposed to be... Um, spiritually involved in this matrix. Uh, come out of her, um, stay separate from the world, be separate from the world. He talks about um, if you love the world, you, um, you have not the love of the Father, um, hate the world and love me. So it, it just seems like maybe, just maybe, that's when that time loop stops for our spirit, that we're not, we, we then... Um, with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the angels make choices that, that lead us down the road 
to Jesus or to or up to heaven, whatever. But but um, t- yeah, I I just think that if we become new, then maybe we do have choice. Actually, addresses the people who never really find Jesus. They just think they did, and they're just thrown about, you know, with the winds of doctrine. They never they never uh, invest their whole spiritual self in Jesus. They still have a foot in all these weird doctrines or in the world, the music, the whatever. Pick 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 something, and they still are not completely given over to Jesus Christ. I don't know, Scott. It just kind of dawned on me. I mean, what do you think? Well, uh, I I agree. I think that that uh, again, as I was mentioning, whatever God's going to do, He's going to do it, and and so. What I see is is theories, people trying to bring in their opinions, um, and, and certainly are welcome to do that. But at the same time, I think we just forget about who God is and that he is going to just do it. Um, but here's the thing. The, the book of Revelation is already established. It's already in place. We already see those events. And so whatever has been put in there, Originally, even if they try and alter it later, it is going to take place. That that is the the faith and the understanding that we must have in God. That through you know John the Revelator and and the prophecies that Jesus was giving, that they're going to take place. And and here's the thing: whenever you have division, whenever you have somebody that that questions themselves, now they may be thinking that they don't believe. You know uh, their their their, more, their apprehension uh, against truth has increased, and I and I think that's really what they're trying to do. I mean, if if they're going to be doing anything, I would think that's it, because I think that they know, because uh, this is also fallen angel technology, that they're not going to be altering. They're just trying to do a mass sweep, trying to get as many to the lake of fire as possible. They want for those, you know, there'll be a great falling away. There'll be those who are disillusioned. There will be those who will be angry. Okay, but we just need to understand the lies and the deception and and just go from here. Um, by the way, I, I did find that YouTube uh, video, and I, I might post it here in a little bit. I want to go through it and make sure that it's the, the same one that has the same facts I was discussing, and then maybe I'll put it up on, on the uh, on the chat room. So go ahead. Yeah, I I, I actually think that um, we, we, while it doesn't it doesn't really cause me to have any fear or reservation about Jesus Himself or any of that because of the um, the situation and how I met Jesus. I I I don't think I can ever let go of that day because I I know He was. That, that the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, was in front of me, and and I was, you know, at what standing, and then on the floor right in front of the Spirit of God. When it was just a big day for me, but I, and I know I'll never forget what happened that day and what happened when he when he then left and the Holy Spirit stayed with me. I remember what happened clearly that I was delivered from massively from just a, a more than I could possibly express. So, um, but I do know what you're talking about because there are people that when anything like this happens, they, they, they panic and they freak out. Now, let me explain something too about that. I, I've been trying to tell um, on the show. I want you to, to picture in your mind, if you're listening to this show now or later in the archive, I want you to picture in your mind. Close your eyes. Picture this. These very nice beings are going to come. Um, they're, they're beautiful. The Agarpians that live in the earth, I know it sounds like science fiction, but it's true. They're going to come, okay? And they're beautiful people. The lavender people that smell like cookies, they, they're very, very kind and loving. I, I need you to imagine the most beautiful people with the most love in their heart. They just love you, and they, and they are so kind. Okay, do you understand that's what they're coming with? See, you, you guys think Lucifer has this big tail and the horns and he's, you know, breathing fire. The problem is these beings are beautiful. Like they are, the felines are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. 
And they they look like the most wonderful beings, and they're so loving and kind. And you want to believe them. You just want to, how could they be lying? I feel the spirit of God on these things. Oh, wow, they're really, you see what I'm saying? You're going to have to get ready because the Mandela effect is, is the least of your worries when it comes to being deceived. That's the least. These beings are going to be convincing many, many people that what they believe is actually wrong. They misinterpreted the scribes that wrote the Bible. Well, they misinterpreted it, and they they didn't know what to call it, so they called it this. And this group called it Sananda, and that group called him Jesus, and, 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 and those people over there called him, you know, Buddha. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to be so slick and so cunning and so loving, loving, kind, warm people. Do you understand? There's going to be, now mark my words, mark my words, I said this. I believe it's going to happen in South America, but it can happen anywhere. They're going to find archaeological evidence that everything we believe about that Bible is wrong. They're going to find it. And they're going to bring it out on, on the news. It's going to be everywhere, the new finding. And believe me, they have evidence. They have archaeological evidence refuting all of our belief systems about God. And, it's, and it is somewhere. And they're going to dig it up. And they're going to go, look what we found. And they're going to start saying, you know, I guess our ancestors didn't truly understand um, the real true creator, because they, you know, they went off in this direction with this Jesus Christ, when the archaeology clearly shows us this, this, and this. I'm giving you scenarios of things that are going to happen. Not might. They're going to happen. Plan. Okay? These beings are coming. Well, they're here. But they're, they're, they're going to bring peace. They're going to have this, you're just going to see the most, lo- it's going to be so consuming, even the elect could be deceived if that were possible. There you go. That's what I'm saying, Scott. And I want people to put this in their mind and see when you're desperate, when they show up, we will be desperate for peace and love and and we'll be sick of sexual immorality and rape and torture and murder and and we're going to be so sick. Look how, how some of you write me. And you tell me, I can't take it anymore. When is he coming? I just can't take it. This is too much. Man, can you imagine with everything that's coming, how sick and tired and worn out, the saints are worn out, right? How we're going to be with all that evil that maybe we would be so tempted to grab golden ring, right? Right? To come into communion with that, right? So I, I want you to put these thoughts in your mind. I want you to I want you to work them out in your mind. What will I do? What will I do? How will I act? What am I? You need to get this in your head right now, so you're not blindsided by what happens. And when it happens, and you say, "I remember she said that. She knew all about these beings. And she said they were coming. They're going to be like this. This is to remember what I'm telling you." that the devil never comes, never comes in an ugly picture. He always comes like an angel of light. So that's my advice, Scott, because they're going to change a whole lot more stuff than just the Mandela effect, and that, that's a small slice of deceit when we're talking about what I know that they have planned from just walking on the other side. Yeah, I, I mentioned that, you know, like when you, you get uh, the professors and the colleges, uh, you have somebody that, you know, uh, comes off the farm and they go to college and they've been raised, you know, in the church their whole life and, and uh, so they have a, a great belief uh, in, in God and Jesus. And they get in these colleges and the professor, uh, who is a liberal, all they've got to do is get the student to question their belief. And in that questioning, there's a fracturing of their faith. And so the whole thing is to attack an individual's faith. 
Uh, I wanted to mention uh, that I did post that uh, video, YouTube video, on the chat, uh, chat room, and that link will take you to the explanation that I was talking about. Um, I was kind of remembering it differently, but what it is is the Secret Service agent who runs up to the car, um, you'll find that the picture that was taken along the road shows the agent in a completely different place than what the video shows us. So there's two realities at the same time captured. Very bizarre, very strange, and the guy that did the video did a pretty good job of showing this. So I would, uh, when you get a chance to go see that, Julie, I sent you a link via email because I know you don't have that ability to see that. So, but um, with 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 colleges, with um, social engineering, with with the the attempt to to disarm us and our spirit, a fracturing of who we are. Because where two or more are gathered, Jesus tells us there he'll be in the midst. And so if you can take people and scatter them, and that's what, you know, percussion grenades are, are about. You know, you got a SWAT team that wants to go inside, uh, and so they'll throw one of them in there. And the whole thing is to cause a temporary blindness, blindness and the, the shock. For instance, years ago, I worked in this manufacturing facility, which was a huge mistake. And it, it, they made blister packs, you know, and you, you, you know those terrible things. You buy something and it takes you a half hour to open it. And you end up cutting yourself because they they're ridiculous the way they package it. Well, that's what this was. And so they had these two molds that would come together on the material and heat it up and then vacuum draw it. Well, in order to get the the parts that were now made in this mold, they had a burst of air that would blow inside to make the thing disengage from the mold so it would come it would release a, a type of release agent well if the timing was wrong this massive mold that when the air came on it sounded like a great big giant kiss but it was so loud the decibels were so incredible that if you were standing within 15 feet of that mold you literally in your head was turned upside down because the decibels were so loud. So you can imagine that when, it, like like the introduction to the show, uh, when, again, pointing out that the reason that I like having that on there is it reminds us what they're really going to do and that it's unilaterally going to happen at the same time, everything at once, and that will overwhelm us. It will tax us. Uh, just like they're taxing the, the, our system in, in the United States with bringing all these people in, uh, just just amazing. But the point of it is, is the overwhelmingness can cause us to disengage. In fact, that's one of the problems that I'm seeing now. You know, I, I guess we're doing some good, Julie, because I'm getting a lot of emails now about people who have had it with the church. Uh, they're they're not hearing um, you know the, the fire and brimstone. They're not hearing those things that uh, that lead them into the understanding that they they need to to walk the line. They need to repent. They need you know they need to be servants. There's no conviction, and so people are coming in with their sins and probably leaving with even more sins. And this is going to this well put it this way we are where we're at because of that we're just like i was mentioning with that manufacturing we we're being turned upside down in our heads and by the way that's a terrible uh, feeling um i i uh you know you can imagine the long-term you know effect that that would have on a person's eardrums you know pressure you know at sea level is 14.7 pounds that's how much atmosphere is on us and then as you go higher in altitude, the air gets thinner and less pressure. So decibels are a reading of measurement of pressure fluctuation. So anything that gives a positive pressure in decibels means a higher pressure. Anything less is, 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 is like a vacuum. And in that uh, increase and decrease, you have vibration. And this is where audio comes from. That's why there's a, a, a wave that comes and it oscillates your ears, 
your your drums and you know the ha- the uh, hammer, anvil, stirrup, you know down the cochlea. It, it, it's amazing how that works. But in your mind, it can be the same thing. You can be overwhelmed with your belief system that puts a pressure on your thought pattern, your your, your cognitive thinking, and can go into overload. And you can, you know, one of the end results is denial. Same thing with fracturing of the mind. When when they do a satanic ritual abuse or those things that they do during Monarch, uh, the trauma-based mind control is to inflict a pressure upon you that overwhelms you to a point that you enter into a different, uh, uh, I won't say belief, but, but a fracturing, a splitting of your spirit, of your mind. And what a terrible, terrible thing to do to people and, and to think of how many children they did that to and still doing to this day, especially with the stuff that you've been revealing about, you know, um, the ceremonies that are coming up, Julie. But if you get a chance, look at that video because there are questions there. That is a prime example of the Mandela effect. I think that when the uh, guy that put this together, he doesn't really address it that way, but uh, I believe that that is a prime example of that. So go ahead, Julie. Well, you know, when also when he said nothing, uh, there's nothing new under the sun, um, I, this is another thing that I have considered just because not, not only to do with my walk on the other side, but then coming to this side, one of the things that I, um, I knew is that you could travel outside of this dimension. You could leave your body and go. I mean, I gave examples uh, of other people that have um, done the same thing. Um, they were uh, they were actually um, these people actually admitted to piggybacking in these fourth dimensional creatures back into this dimension with them, and then allowing them to use their body until they could go through the ritual to move into a new body. Okay, so. There are people that have done that. I quoted their names. I gave everyone their names. Just go look them up. Here's the problem. We go back and we look, or I I have done this, and I would invite you guys to do the same. I want you to go back to the earliest pictures you can find that were taken that we can get our hands on, and you look at many of the people who are are famous um, today, and I want you to go look, and you will find pictures of Civil War people and, and different types of people that look exactly like the same people that are famous today. Uh, Keanu Reeves uh, was one. Um, Putin looks exactly, Vladimir Putin, like the, uh, the Caesar. Looks just like that, that statue of Caesar. I mean, it's just uncanny. Um, Robin Williams, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, there are so many. Uh, Nicholas Cage, these people, Kanye West uh, and um, uh, Jay Z. You go back in time. Michael Brown, who is Michelle Obama, who I hope by now you guys know that that's, that's a man. Um, I saw his picture, his a bust of his face. Um, that is being called Nefertiti. Very old, ancient bust, and it is to a T, the same person. Now, Obama has the face of Akhenaten. If nothing new under the sun and everything that has been is, is again, does that mean that, that Lucy has his own children, which we know he does, that he recycles? he's created, because I told you the reptilians use a body until they use it up, and it's gone, and they transfer their essence into a new body. What if they go back into a a copy of the old one? So that's the one they like. Do you understand? I'm starting to put these pieces together in understanding how um, dimensional travel works. And I gave you uh, uh, the other night not just my, my theory, but facts. And, see, and, and I did tell you where it was my theory. 
I believe with the Han Purple and the esoteric properties of Han Purple, the barium uh, copper silicate uh, um, properties of Han Purple and the spinning liquid mercury, that that is how they are getting in and out. And they're being brought from the fourth to the third dimension. I, I just believe it with all I've got. And then, the, and then the coincidence of all that they're spraying our planet with barium, and they have been since the 60s. Well, that's going to open. That's going to, you know what I think it's going to do? The entire third dimension and fourth dimension will merge as one. Because the veil of the third dimension to keep them out, and they're in the fourth dimension, is going to be completely wiped out meaning their dimension is now here. Well, there is no split, and that's the veil that keeps their dimension and our dimension separate. Well, that veil is going to be rent, and there will be no separation anymore. They will be here. They will have access, and I believe the barium that they're spraying in the chemtrails is actually going to facilitate that very thing of the entire veil being rent, and it's going to come down like a curtain on a stage, and we are going to see everything in the fourth dimension real and up close and personal. And the Bible talks about it, so I have biblical texts to back it up. Ancient Hindu texts, ancient Buddha texts, ancient uh, uh, Egyptian texts. I mean, all of these ancient writings, the, the green tablets of thought, all, or the emerald tablets of thought, that all this stuff talks about all of these things, the Epic of Gilgamesh. I mean, if you guys could which I had a, a, a response from a, a, a lady who, who works a, a lot, and she can't do all the research that I do, and um, bless her heart, I know how that goes. Um, and I'm just blessed, blessed by Jesus Christ to be able to do that. And I know I am, and I thank him for it, because I, I take my job of research extremely serious. And, 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 and my, my father once told, I was starting a new company, and, and, and somebody said, well, that's not going to, that you're not going to have, that, that company's not going to go. I mean, you're not going to, you know, and he looked at him and he said, if she says she's going to do it, it's going to be successful. Watch. And within nine months, I couldn't find enough employees to, to, to keep up with my business. I mean, it was, it was just absolutely horrendous. And, and so, you know, that's my, that's who I am. And Scott knows, um, he knows me. And he knows that when I get on something, I will go to Russia if I have to on the Internet trying to find stuff. In fact, the Constitution Party, per one of the people that was running, that's a friend of Scott, said if he was to get the nomination, he said, I'm getting her to go to Washington, D.C., the Library of Congress, and do research for me. Because I will turn over every stone. I will leave no stone under. And let me tell you why. Because I grew up in a lie. I grew up as Jehovah's Witness. I was fed a bunch of lies, and then I was in the occult, just kind of got into all that, and, and I was a psychic and all that, and I grew up with nothing but lies. I had satanic lies fed to me from the get-go. So I, I vowed that I would not stop until I researched every single thing, and it was settled in my mind of the truth. But I also have the Holy Spirit who has been the one who's guided me to all the truth. He, I see him pushing me in directions to go look. So that's, that, that is what I do. And, you know, Scott, when I look at all of these ancient texts and I look at all of this, the, the information that I've been able to gather, um, you can see what they're doing. You know, uh, the, the barium copper silicate, that's sprayed so heavily, that's to rent the veil. They've got to break this veil down so they can come in. And, and, and the way it looks in the biblical text, as though it's going to be like a flood, you know, like the Hoover Dam, you know, the old flood. That's how it sounds when I read the biblical text. So I, I would tell you, um, if you know Jesus Christ, then you have no reason to be a, afraid. Oh, I'm serious. You know what? If you just know that he's got your back, and even if you perish, you're still going to live, you know, because nothing ever dies. No one dies. Okay? Nobody ever dies. It's just where you go afterwards. So if you have him, don't be afraid. I, I, I advise you to stand up and, and shake your fist at the devil and shake your fist at the reptilians and say, oh, I don't think so, buddy. 
and shake your fist at the demons and say, no, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. You're not going to push me around and run over top of me. I'm going to stand up to you. I am not afraid of you. And I am above you. If anybody should be afraid of somebody, you better be afraid of me. And you need to stand up and know that you are a child of God and you have a right to, to send those demonic beings straight to the pit. You have the right. You are, you are, and it, read, read what it says. You're going to judge angels, okay? That's the, this is your, going to be your job. You're going to be judging these very demons and angels and all this stuff. So, you know, that puts you in a lot higher position than they are. So you walk with that, you know, you walk that walk and you hold your head up. And don't you be afraid of what's coming. We're all, I can say, being very concerned because it's going to be totally, we read the Bible, we get it. Being concerned, that's, that's, that's okay. And, and you know what? I told a sister last night when I was praying for her, I want you to say, everybody listen, when you get fear, the minute you feel that fear, I want you to say, I renounce fear, I do not receive fear, and in the name of Jesus, I command the fear to stand down and go to the pit. I do not receive anything from you. In the name of Jesus, get out right now. And I want you to say, I receive everything Jesus has to say. I receive the Holy Spirit and His Word. And you start listening, and you just say, Jesus did not give me the spirit of fear, but the, but the spirit of love, power, sound mind. Say it. And just keep saying it. And you just keep saying, I don't receive the spirit of fear, and I renounce you. I renounce you, and I curse you, and I send you to the pit. That's, I actually had people asking me, Scott, what do you say? You say that. And, and resist the devil, and he will flee. Because I want you to know that fear, panic, and terror, there were the three reigning demons in me. That, that was the three that I had at the top of the food chain who were running everybody. And I had to do the same thing. And you know, Scott, when, when they would leave from all that, and you said, just wait, because, um, you know, what they, they uh, remember when I was talking to you about there was a person I couldn't, she kept, they'd leave and then they'd come back. And we were talking about how that happened to me. That the, the big guys left, and there were other ones to step up and assume their place, their place, and try to, you know, get me fearful again. And that took a lot of deliverance. But it, it it wasn't the deliverance minister who could take all of that away. The fear demons, I had to work on that myself by not receiving it and not allowing it to continue. And I would say what I wanted to feel. I wouldn't say I feel uh, scared. I would say. I feel strong in Jesus Christ. I can do all things in Christ who is with me. I, you know, and I would say the way I wanted to feel, not the way I did. I would not receive it, and I would just keep saying. And you know what? Eventually, they scrammed, and that happened so many times that then there was nothing left, and nothing came back or popped up, you know. So I don't know, Scott, I think... I've had several people ask me in the last three or four days, what do we say? What words do we tell them? Could you please say that on the air? Tell me what word. There you go. Right there. So, hope that helps. Yeah, I, I wanted to, if we've got some new listeners, if you go to uh, my website at scotthinsford.org, at the top you'll see the daily prayer covering. That in itself uh, has been a very powerful tool for many, many, many people. I had some woman call me one time and tell me that her husband was having a heart attack and he had already had heart issues before, so they knew exactly that what was taking place. And, you know, they called 911 and then she went and grabbed the uh, prayer covering and started warring, using the words in there, praying against anything that may have been attacking him. And by the time the ambulance showed up, he was okay. He didn't even need to go to the hospital. So it turned out that it was a spiritual issue that was attacking him. And, and Julie, we've, we've run into that before. Now, the other thing, too, is if you email me, like at scott at scotthenser.org, um, you know, my book is for sale, but, I, but for those who are interested, I still have it in PDF. 
And in the chapters of deliverance, children's deliverance, breaking curses, blessing, blessings and curses, are is an example of the words that I use during deliverance, that I use all the time. That's kind of become second nature. Because when you speak and speak in the spirit realm with authority, you're, you're basically putting the puppies back in the box. You have the authority and the power to do that. They have to obey you. They have to listen. And so sometimes your specific words are very important. Now, I, I do not believe in formulas, but there are things that over the years I have learned that is just the general rule. So what I give is just examples, and with those examples, then you can start to let the Holy Spirit lead you and to guide you into those things uh, necessary to be speaking. And I do that all the time. You know, I'll, uh, I've mentioned before that if it's a heated situation, that many of the times I'll just back off for a moment and make sh- to make sure that I'm not operating in the flesh, that I'm in the Spirit. Because if I'm in the flesh, then I'm not going to be hearing from the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to be doing what I do. That's not what I want. I want God to speak through me. I want Him to use me. I want to be doing the things that are per His order. God is a God of order, not a God of disorder. And anything other than that, then I can assure you, is not going to work. So if you do that, scott at scotthenser.org, I'd be more than happy to send that to you. And we're not in this business to make money. We're here to to help you because there are some who cannot afford, uh, you know, they're they're in such bad shape. Most of the people that Julie and I work with um, are devastated. They're under financial curses. They, they, They are so spiritually poor because of the things that have been done to them that they've lost their jobs. They they went through a terrible divorce and, and, you know, had everything taken away from them. I've seen that. It's a terrible situation. So either case, we just want to make sure that you get the information. But Julie's right. Um, know who you are. Take a stand. Do not receive those things that are thrown at you like fiery darts. That was one of the other things is to make sure that you guard your heart. Take every thought captive. And now with the advent of psychotronics, and we've, we've talked about this, don't believe every thought that's in your head. Anything that contradicts the Word of God, anything that does not line up with it, obviously didn't come from Him. He's not going to oppose Himself. A house divided cannot stand. So just understand that when there are things that do not line up, then we know they're coming from somewhere else. So... All right. Well, you know, Julie, we got lots of time. Was there something else you wanted to go into? Um, well, this, there's been people that have, have been writing and asking a lot of questions. And just, there, you know, I talk about, I guess a lot of things I talk about is not normal mainstream information. And um, so I, I, want, I want it for people to be able to look around and see um, what's going on in their surroundings, and I want to, I want you to be able to, to to see the signs that are in the Bible, but I want you to see them in the earth, so you can start to put things together. Um, I heard a, a a show on Calvin Calvinism, and uh, that kind of reminded me that um, the laziness of anyone who says they believe in Jesus that could actually think they can do whatever they want and they still go to heaven, that's insane. But one of the things that reminded me of was that um, I had done an enormous amount of research on all religions, and when I had come to no thought, the only religion that I had not um, completely uh, uh, researched was Christianity. I researched the old stuff that tied in with all the, you know, the the, the Egyptians and, and, and Babylon and all that, but I had never, like, I didn't know what the, these Christian churches were teaching. I didn't know anything about that. And so when I, when I did a few years of research, what I was able to uncover is the history of all types of, of religions. Islam, which is definitely... Um, I'm sorry to any Muslim people, um, uh, you know, that that's just the religion of Lucifer. 
this, I, I tell you that because I care about your soul. And let me tell you, any religion that tells you to go around killing people, um, that is so far uh, removed from anything that followers of Jesus teach. You, you just don't do that. Now, self-defense is one thing, but to go around killing people because they won't convert to your brand of religion, that's, that's, that's satanic in, in, in a nutshell. That's just satanic. So um, we all have free will, and we're allowed to make the choices, and you don't have a right to tell someone they judge and jury and executioner. Only the creator can do that, and he's going to, which his, the book says he is. But I re- researched all these religions, and what I saw was that Christianity um, was, a, was actually the main perpetrator of serpent worship brought down into the present day. They won't acknowledge this. They will call me a liar, that, that they're, they, don't, they never worship the serpent. But they're the reason that we have serpent worship in America, it's the Christians that have done it, and they don't believe that. But you know, every year they put up a, a Christmas tree, which is in which represents the tree in the garden, and they the garland around it represents the snake, the serpent. So they're that's serpent worship. Okay, they're putting that up in their house. Easter, the eggs are called the wicked serpent eggs. They're actually serpent eggs. 